on 19 keys and this is high level conversation <laughs> Um, yeah, so all that to say, sitting on that panel, I realized that I'm much more capable of designing and solving the problems in these systems than people who have multiple PhDs that lead departments and mm -hmm. schools because I don't sit around theorizing about it. I got my hands dirty and did it. Mm. I've been working in AI for 12 years. I've worked in production scale systems. I've built things that I regret and things I'm extremely proud of. But along the way, I've actually had to sit in a room and say, well, hey, if we do this, then it might produce this result in this country. So how do we honor the social norms of that country? For example, after George Floyd died, product inclusion at Google, which is headed by Annie Jean-Baptiste, a Haitian woman, decided that they wanted it. So if you ask Google, like, okay, Google, is it okay to be gay? That Google would say yes. Okay, Google, is it okay to be transgender? Then Google would say yes. Okay, Google, is it okay if boys like boys? Google would say yes. And I said, I get why y'all are doing that in the U.S., but, like, my mom is a fundamentalist Christian and doesn't agree with my sexuality. Mm. And aren't we pushing off our beliefs onto people who don't? Mm. I'm gay. I'm cool with it. I understand people aren't, and I respect their right mm. to not agree with my lifestyle. So I, mm, what does that mean that we're normalizing? And then how are we going to deal with that when we get to places like Saudi Arabia, where that is not a social, social norm, where it is not socially acceptable, or Russia or Nigeria, where, it's gay, or where being gay is illegal, or uh, you know Ghana, where being gay is illegal? How are we going to deal with the system in those places? Because are we going to force Google's view this one person in here who wants to do this for a marketing lick and to look, make Google look good and to, to get something on their bullet points so they can get promoted? Do you get to decide what's right and wrong for the rest of the world? Mm. Right? When our value systems as humans are not 100% aligned, then there will never be an algorithm that is 100% fair. Mm. We are always making trade-offs in value systems and deciding whose matters more. Mm. So why are we letting companies and the random employees that happen to be in the rooms for those conversations or happen to work on certain teams decide morality for the world? Mm. So the way it ended up, it rolled out in the U.S. There's a blog post about it. And then when you went to other countries and you asked it, it said, sorry, I can't answer that. So they did that fairness right. gerrymandering. Yeah. Right? But even then, why do you get to be, as a publicly traded for-profit company, the arbitrator of morality mm. in protection of your profits? Mm. I personally don't agree with that. Mm. I don't agree that a company like Google should get to decide what is and isn't the correct version of very what's the word, very challenged ideologies mm -hmm. that may be legal in a normal sense, but are not universally aligned on morally within the same geographic region, right? right. So, like, why are you taking a stance? Yeah, I think that's where you get the, the, the chaos. That's where you get the wars. That's where you get all of the problems because I think it was, who was it? It was the Pope, actually, that said something. I'm not sure if this was a real article or it was generated or whatever, but I believe in the stance that he was taking at the time, and I never agree with the Pope. But <laughs> um, he was just talking about when you got a lot of these, like, Islamic countries and things of that nature, and I think he was probably using, I think he was using um, Muammar Gaddafi um, as an example. He says some of these countries require a dictator in order to keep stabilization and peace in that region. Right. So when you go over there and you enforce it, you take over right a regime and you try to put in a puppet one or you go kill a president or you go kill a king. Right now, look what happens afterwards. There's an increase in slave trade. There's death. There's poverty. There's disease. Right. This country is completely tarnished and destroyed. But you marketed this as if you was freeing these people. Mm. Right. And you should not have that power to just be able to go to places and destabilize them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I believe that same thing. And he talking to, you know, essentially United States government. Right. And other governments that do that. But now you're talking to these tech companies that have the ability to do that. Because that first part of destabilization is going to be through that changing of and influencing the morals and the values to challenge the state. Right. But what is the ripple effect of that? Mm -hmm. Right. How many people actually literally die from that? How many you destabilize that whole entire region? Now, that country got to go through 100 years of famine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And destruction because of what? So 100 percent. 
we don't think about the power that these companies wield with the decisions that they make day to day and the ripple effects that that have in destroying the stabilization because you get to look at it from your viewpoint and say that, yeah, no, we should change this because I feel like that. Exactly. You don't get to change that. That's playing God. Exactly. Right? And then, yeah, when you have those sick. challenges, you wonder why. It gets sick because it's not like the whole company comes and takes a vote. Mm. It's whoever happens to be in the inclusion role or in the responsibility right. role, which even how they got there, how was that decided? Yeah. And even then, whose voices are in the room and whose voices are left out? I mean, mm. I represent a ton of communities. I'm black, I'm Latina, I'm queer, I'm a veteran, I'm differently. I check all the tax boxes, right? Mm. But I don't fully represent and never want to speak fully on behalf of any of those communities. Mm. Because within those communities, there's infinite diversity of opinion. You want to know how black people feel? Talk to a variety of black people. I can't speak on behalf mm. of us. You want to know how Latino people feel? I'm not your representative. I'm not someone who speaks on behalf of the gay community, even mm. though I'm a member of it, because I don't represent all of it. No, no one individual does. Mm. So even if you go and you ask the employee groups at Google, you ask the, the, the black Googler network what they think. The fact that those black people are even at Google means that they represent a small sample of the actual community. Right. It's a lot of black people that have a lot of views that do not have the training, education, access or resources to even know how to apply for a job at Google, mm. let alone be one of the couple thousand people that's there. Yeah, there's there's a, a large array of different ethnic <laughs> backgrounds. <laughs> and so these companies are getting the power to play God without the accountability or responsibility to the people that mm -hmm. are responsible to their shareholders. And that is so much more dangerous than politicians that we picked, or even if we didn't pick them, that are in our face and we know what they're doing. And the crazy part, a lot of it, these are atheists playing God. And they don't believe in none of the religious or spiritual systems whatsoever. So it's, it's almost, it's a spiritual warfare thing where you get to be in position. And you say, well, I don't believe in God. And now you get to make decisions that directly trample on somebody else's rights and beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a dangerous thing. I and mean, you don't even know that this person who comes from this ideology is making a decision based on their own ideology, mm -hmm. right? Which is direct warfare against yours. And then when you feel attacked, there's nothing that you can do. And the consequence is already too late. And the companies will say, well, we can't let more people from the outside in because it's our proprietary technology. We got you got to protect our intellectual property. How about you re respect my spiritual property? Mm. How about you respect my actual reality that you're affecting? Right. You know what I'm saying? But and then the people end up fighting each other right over decisions that the corporations have made. Mm -hmm. And you try to tell people this night is happening. Like, no, this is my reality. I know this is happening because things have changed and it's creating chaos. This chaos would not be happening if things were flowing in the same manner in which they were. Mm -hmm. So individually, as you try to create stability in your life and you try to create peace in your life and find harmony, then you have to deal with the outside effect of things that's outside your control. Mm -hmm. I can't control how the AI and this app algorithm works whatsoever. Right. You have your household. You're trying to raise your children a certain way, but you can't control outside influences. I just wanted to buy your technology to give to my child because they said they wanted to use it. I didn't want you to influence a spiritual position in life. Right now, you don't have a relationship with your grown child because they got an algorithm that helped them become a, a atheist, just for lack of a, another example. So it's like, yeah, these are the parts where the average person don't have time to think about because they live in and just reacting to everything. They don't have time to. And this is where we go back again to at the beginning of the conversation, talking about thinking. The average person doesn't have the can afford to really think. Mm -hmm. Right. Like imagine a, a person could become a philosopher. You don't have that time to philosophize about things besides people get high, hit the blunt and, and have a random thought. Mm -hmm. But for me, philosophy is the art of thinking, saying you a thought leader. You're thinking the thoughts that you can help give to people because they don't have the time to think about them. Right. Saying you a future, you have the time to, to simulate. Think about the triggers and changes that's happened in this society. Right. So that by the time they happen, people are not reacting slow. Right. And they can interact with the opportunities that come along with it. Right. Like 
all of this requires time, which most people don't have at all. So most people are not thinking. We're just uh, organisms of reaction, mm -hmm. right? And that's how they want to keep you operating. That's the same thing with politics. People don't have time to think. I need you to tell me what to do. Yo, who should I vote for? Mm -hmm. Yo, what are they doing? I don't know. I just need to line up like a drone in line and click this box. That's what I'm, I ain't got time to be thinking about all this. They, people like their lives ordered, right? But you don't know who's ordering your steps. Mm -hmm. And that's the dangerous thing. Yeah, and the people who are don't care about you, don't care about your community, know they're leaving your community out of the way they're designing these systems or even testing them for harm. Or even when they do test them for harm in your community and they find it, they don't prioritize fixing mm -hmm. it unless you raise hell. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, that model that you're talking about, about the thought leaders versus the doers, it brings me back to the Underground Railroad. So a lot of people don't know about the conductors, right, mm -hmm. who were the group of, of free enslaved Africans and some white sympathizers up in Canada who orchestrated the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They put the whole thing together, mm -hmm. right? They were the ones who came up with the paths, the routeways, how it would happen, how they would get them over the border into Canada. Now, the thing is, they didn't tell nobody who they were because they knew if someone got caught along the way and knew who they were, they'd take the whole thing down. They didn't even tell Harriet Tubman that the conductor, conductors existed until after she had already done like 20 trips. But these were the folks who were organizing the steps along the way, who told that pastor to say, when someone comes and they knock twice and they whistle, then you just open the door, let them in, and you wait till the cart comes and put them in there. There are people who have to play that role, but that role is just as valuable as the conductor because without them, the plan doesn't exist. They're just in a different position of execution. So there are people who just need to be like, okay, tell me what to repost. Tell me what to retweet. Tell me what to pay attention to and watch. And then you've got your people who think a little more regionally. Hey, they're kind of hot on that pastor. Let's go to this other one. But then you've got the conductors who have a responsibility to shape the whole thing and insulate themselves from being harmed in the event that people who oppose it come to it. Right. And so I think that there's levels that people are on. And I, I identify more as towards the conductor side as someone who can see at a much larger level and is responsible for orchestrating pieces. Mm -hmm. Right. And in that. There's this responsibility to make it the go to the app and click this button here and do this right. and put your idea here and then it comes out. Right. There's a responsibility to construct that. I think those types of tools that help. The folks know how to play their role in collective liberation or collective uh, re collective shaping of this system uh, or redesign of this system without forcing them to have to become conductors mm -hmm. and not judging them because they're not. Mm. That's not their role. Everyone's not supposed to know the politics of why you have to say this this way or what this or that means. There has to be grace for people. Mm -hmm. Right. Like even with pronouns, like that's new to me. That wasn't something I'm mm -hmm. gay as hell. That was not a part of my community when mm. I was growing up that I had to call you Zay Zim Zer Zaddy. Mm. I got to call you frog. I <laughs> yes. got like, this is new. For wow. Me. It's a new programming language. This is new for me. And so people got to give me grace if I accidentally misgender you. But if you say, how could you do that? You're one of our community. You don't ba -ba 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 -ba, and come at me. Then how am I supposed to ever feel welcome? You know, we got so a saying in Islam, there's no compulsion in Islam, which means that I'm not going to try to force my beliefs and ideology on you, mm -hmm. right? If I present myself as an example of something that, and you like, wait a minute, what's behind, how you do, what's behind your discipline? What's behind the way you move? Like, tell me your strategy. And I'm like, okay, well, now you're getting into my funnel, right? To my belief system. Mm -hmm. And if that works for you, Right. Then you can take that upon yourself and and utilize that to create the results that you believe that I get from it. Mm. Right. But I'm not about to go walk around preaching, telling you, stop doing that. Do this. You know, what I mean, that's where we have this thing where the world is becoming so compulsory, where we're trying to force everything on to people. Right. And what it does is, first of all, if you have to force something on to someone, it's not flow. They don't want it. You know what I mean? So if 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 it's something that is naturally good for people, right, then allow them the grace to be able to evolve into it, mm -hmm. right? This is actually what most people don't understand why Islam grows so much because they don't bite trying to force it on you. You know what I mean? It's giving you a choice, take it or leave it, right? So I believe that if, if, if the world wasn't so insecure, right, about 
their position, they wouldn't need to force it onto other people, right? They would say, well, this is good. And people are going to obviously see this is good for them, right? And they're going to want what's good for them, mm. right? And that's the position that I take spiritually, right? That's the position that I take mentally as a leader, as a, as a doers. The evidence has to be based on the results, mm -hmm. right? So it's like if I'm, if I'm ultra rich and you ask me how you want to be rich, I'm just going to give you the way I did it. Mm -hmm. I'm not about to walk around like, bro, you broke. Let me tell you how to do this. No, nah, forget the way you're doing yours. I don't know. Come, come rock with me. Now, I okay. got some friends that need a dictator. Be like, okay, that happened a little different with money. <laughs> it's a little different with money. You can't dictate people. You broke. I can teach you how to get some money. Come over here. And then sometimes, yes, you do have that hand to where, you know, um, you can make suggestions to people, but it's just saying we're not going to force it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're telling you what it is because what happens is you have a problem. And what I'm trying to tell you is this is a way to solve it, mm -hmm. right? Like, if you don't have a problem, I can't give you a solution. Mm -hmm. You can only give people a solution that got a problem. And when people can recognize they got a problem, see, being broke is an easy problem to recognize. Yo, don't have money. I got a way to help. Yeah. Boom. You ain't got to force that on me. You already gave me a reason to come tap in with you. Yeah. Now, some people, you can't force them to change because it won't work. They won't accept it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the problem with force change is that it eventually becomes rejected. So I got brothers, I got family that I can't force them to want more for themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they're not made like that. But I can see them along the path of realization. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I can give you all the tools for you to realize it for yourself, now you're going to grow into that understanding. Right. Sometimes people need it in different ways. Like I'm a t you 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 can drop a seed on somebody, and when they up, their ego is so hot that they won't listen. But when they down, they remember that seed. Like, damn, bro, what you say, man, you was right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't forced it on you, but I might say it repetitiously until it's your time to get it. Information is everywhere. You can log into YouTube right now and type in almost any subject. But I'm going to be honest with you. You won't even know if it's human generated or if it's just based on the algorithm that figured out that you wanted to find this subject. It queried your information, created an automated process so they can get your eyeballs to try to sell you a product or get advertisement dollars. Humans need humans. We don't work and operate that well learning from machines because it's the connection to the information, it's the connection to the process that allows us to grow our neurons, it's that connection that allows us to be able to tap into that tapestry of thought to where we need to learn and be in environments to where we feel aspirational and we are inspired and it's empathetic. So today it's not about just having access to the information, it's not just about being able to have democratized education everywhere, it's about connection. Are you actually connected to it? When you are in a community, it reinforces that environment of connection. And that's why being a part of high level looks so important. So you are reinforcing an environment with that human connection. I see you, you see me, you feel felt, you want to learn. Information and data, statistics and numbers and automation is fine, especially if you want to create income and utilize the technology for such. But human connection has always been a real source of learning. Don't just go for the information. Go for the community and go for the connection. Tap in with the guy. 19 keys and this is high level conversation.